Hello and welcome to yet another session of the course, The History of English Language and Literature. In today's lecture, we shall be looking at drama in the Victorian age. At the outset, let us begin with this caveat that drama was not a major genre in the Victorian period. The Victorian age, in fact, is at least known as the age of plays. But nevertheless, as we had been doing in our discussion of the other uh, ages and uh, periods as well, even when a genre or particular forms of writing were getting eclipsed in an age, it is important to highlight even the little output that was uh, uh, being produced in terms of that particular genre. This is important for us to know how various genres were faring at various uh, points of time and also see, to see how literary tendencies were getting shifted due to the socio-political events and the socio-political uh, concerns of particular times. So, in order to continue building a structure, coherence and continuity into our discussion of literary history, here we go taking a look at Victorian drama, though the output was quite marginal. Most of the drama of this period was produced because many of the writers who were also poets and novelists, they also uh, wanted to experiment in different forms of writing. We also noticed it in uh, the earlier discussions where some of the poets also had uh, shown a lot of interest in writing a couple of dramas. So, uh, many of these uh, writers were also novelists such as uh, Thackeray, uh, Dickens and uh, Wilkie Collins. Though the output in terms of drama was quite limited, we noted that from the uh, early uh, 19th century onwards throughout the Romantic period, drama continued to be uh, quite a popular form. The theatre going activity had not really come down. In fact, there were two major patented uh, playhouses, uh, Common Garden and Drury Lane. They were enlarged during this time. They could house about 3,500 people at a, a single time. And uh, two other theatres were also quite uh, prominent, uh, Adelphi and Sadler's Wells. So, we find a lot of uh, plays getting staged in these uh, uh, playhouses doing quite well in terms of uh, revenue generation, which also indicates that uh, the play going was uh, one of the important leisure activities of those times. In the popular plays of those times, a lot of everyday English is being used. So, the dramatic English is no longer separate from the English which is used in the uh, streets and we also find uh, an adaptation of uh, most of the earlier successful plays being done in the Victorian period. If we try to look at the kind of drama which was dominating the Victorian period, it was mostly farces and pantomimes. We also find uh, melodramatic and historical plays as well. In the Victorian period, the dramatists faced a central problem in comparison to the uh, novelist. Vis-a-vis -vis the novelist, they were not really free to write about anything that also had placed a severe constraint on their genius and also on their powers of expression. If we recall, we had already taken a look at the censorship of plays which came into being with the Theatre's Licensing Act of 1737 and until its abolition in 1968, which was a period of about 230 years, we find the output of drama being severely constrained and restricted. So, during this period, we also notice that a wide range of subjects were not being allowed to be handled on stage because it was uh, seen that many of the things could be uh, could form a corrupting influence on the popular audience. That would also lead us to another question, how about the other genres and how about the other forms of writing which were also uh, corrupting quote unquote the popular audience. But uh, again, it is important to uh, highlight that some of these things did have a political origin and we find all of these uh, continuing into the literary and other artistic forms of expression. Uh, for instance, the Theatre's Licensing Act of 1737, initially uh, we know that it was a political move. It would be useful to recall some of the events that led to this uh, censorship uh, act and also the turn of events which uh, had emerged from the restoration period onwards. As we recall it, it was mainly a political move to begin with. But however, we find this censorship expanding to cover other aspects and other areas of life as well. So, there is a restriction being imposed on religious and moral themes as well. It is no longer dominated by the political tendencies or the shifting loyalties, but it is also about even trivial things such as the use of bad language on stage or any kind of a proposal of indecency. And altogether, we find the authorities trying to ban anything and everything which is likely to deprave and corrupt the potential audience. This being a very abstract kind of understanding, it was quite impossible to bring in anything which could offend anyone in terms of a moral or even any kind of religious sensibility. In spite of all of these uh, dominating uh, events, we find the Victorian drama gradually but steadily moving towards a realistic form of depiction. This happens from the 1860s onwards. In that sense, it is very important to highlight the contributions and the significance of uh, the playwright Tom Robertson. If we go through the titles of his plays, we can almost sense the kind of place that he was producing. Society in 1865, a cast in 1867, play in 1868 and school in 1869. 
we find that all of his works were quite uh, removed from the melodramatic depictions of that time. He is also more responsive to the society and tries to uh, imbibe the spirit of the Victorian uh, temper. He also had rejected the usual conventions of farce and burlesque and had uh, moved towards a more realistic depiction. Accordingly, it's important to highlight the fact that he is the first playwright to insist on stage setting of a room having real ceiling and real properties. So this was a first move towards realist drama and he is also seen as the uh, initiator of what has later come to be known as cup and saucer dramas and this in fact was a kind of drama which paid a lot of realistic attention to detail and uh, this is in stark contrast with the earlier kind of drama which could be staged with a mere representative prop which was uh, placed on the stage. The cup and saucer drama initiated by Tom Robertson could be seen as uh, the forerunner of uh, the kitchen sink place about which we shall be taking a look at when we talk about the 20th century drama. But in spite of these many promising tendencies which were dominating the Victorian stage, there were also a lot of controversies that emerged in the 1880s and 1890s which hampered the growth of uh, the stage activities as well. Later in our discussions on uh, the English novel, we shall also be noticing that this was the period when the realist form of artistic expression was gaining a lot of popularity. But however, it also had led to a lot of uh, uh, criticism uh, from the popular audience. Accordingly, we find the realistic novels of the French writer Emily Zola and the popular English writer Thomas Hardy being publicly burned because of the outrage that they caused. The Victorian England, though it was quite tolerant about many kinds of expression, we do find certain unreasonable reactions and um, outrages against certain things that they consider taboo or unacceptable or even obscene. Realism was one such literary a uh, tendency that the Victorians initially could not tolerate at all. In drama, we find this getting reflected again because an outrage, though it developed as a reaction to one particular thing, we do find it uh, spreading across genres in the Victorian period. As a result, the outrage caused by the translations of the plays of the Norwegian playwright Henrik Ibsen needs to be recalled at this time. The influence of Ibsen was very memorable and extremely powerful in the Victorian stage. Though Ibsen wrote his plays for the Norwegian audience in the 1860s, they reached the English stage only by the 1880s. From then on, a revolution had set in not just in the dramatic genius but also in the many things which were dominating the Victorian society in terms of uh, the uh, social conventions, the uh, family institutions, etc. His important work, The Pillars of Society and A Doll's House, they were accepted with a lot of enthusiasm in England but they also had led to a lot of criticism because of the kind of uh, unconventional questioning and the challenging of uh, authority that I did. A doll's house for example was uh, quite influential in challenging the conventions of uh, a typical English family. It also uh, encouraged a lot of free thought especially from young women and this was seen as quite challenging and quite unacceptable by um, many of the Victorian uh, masters of those time. A literary event which marked the foundations of a uh, turning point in English drama was Bernard Shaw's work The Quintessence of Ibsenism. This work was the first essay to give an impetus to Ibsen's work in England and after that in the 20th century mostly we find the reflections of this particular genius which began to emerge from the end of the Victorian uh, period. Ibsen and the kind of support that he garnered in the English stage, it led to the emergence of what we now understand as the play of ideas. The concept of the play of ideas was quite significant that there was a radical shift from action on the stage towards dialogues and towards a prominence of a dissemination of ideas. Oscar Wilde was perhaps the master of this new kind of play of ideas and he was very successful between the period 1892 and 1895. His plays uh, were very witty and humorous, it always drew a lot of audience and his uh, best known works were in the form of epigrammatic uh, comedies and in his comedies we find that mostly he was handling dangerous and compromising secrets and since it was infused with a lot of humor he could even surpass many of the uh, censorship rules of the day. And if you take a look at some of his leading uh, plays, A Woman of No Importance uh, staged in 1893 was about illegitimate birth. It had, had it not been for the comic interface that uh, Wilde gave it, it would not have been possible to talk about such taboo subjects. The plays An Ideal Husband and Lady Windermere's uh, Fan dealt with culpable indiscretions. The importance of being earnest, so far the best known of Wilde's plays and even uh, this continues to be staged even in the contemporary. 
this dealt with obscure social origins and he was while was extremely critical about the social hierarchy and notions of aristocracy in most of the plays wilde reveals the hypocrisy of uh, uh, the victorian society in that sense again it's useful to remember that the victorian society though it had placed a lot of uh, uh, value on the outgoing religious sentiments it was also a time dominated by a lot of hypocritical uh, thoughts so it was not really easy to differentiate between what the actual belief of a person was and what he outwardly had shown this hypocrisy was mostly uh, found within the circles of the aristocracy and uh, in the upper middle class strait of the society so why was one of those who completely exposed all of these uh, traits and also made a lot of ridicule and uh, fun out of it while also had to face some uh, criticism and censorship his uh, play uh, salome it was uh, based on a biblical tragedy and it was uh, uh, written in 1891 92 though it was written in french it was banned in the english stage as well and it was uh, he could never stage it in any of the english uh, theaters allow me to read to you uh, a passage from the importance of uh, being earnest this is from the famous handback scene it's also considered as one of the wittiest scenes in the english plays this is a conversation between two characters lady bracknell and uh, jack lady bracknell asks are your parents living i have lost both of them both to lose one parent may be regarded as a misfortune to lose both looks like carelessness so this kind of humor which even bordered on a uh, dark humor and uh, a lot of irony and even some kind of a uh, uh, comic cruelty it was immensely popular and it he and wild in that sense continues to be one of the most quoted uh, humorous and satires even in the contemporary in spite of the immense success and popularity that wild enjoyed we find him moving towards a very tragic end he had a very humiliating end to his dramatic career he was sentenced to 2 years of hard labor for homosexual offenses homosexuality as a practice was made illegal in england in 1885 in the contrast between wild's plays and the kind of uh, uh, personal life that he led we can find some of the uh, traits of uh, victorianism getting embodied as well as some of the historians have uh, pointed out the dichotomy between the elegant social witticisms and the seeming frivolity of the comic plots and the shame and scandal of wilde's private life is almost emblematic of the whole crisis of victorian morals so significantly even for certain writers who tried to stay away from some of the pressing concerns of the day and try to completely uh, uh, camouflage these concerns with uh, uh, wit and irony and humor we find even they are not able to stay away from the crisis of uh, victorian morals the other important works uh, by wilde include the picture of dorian gray and telleny and he also wrote some non fictional and non dramatic works such as the truth of masks and the soul of man under socialism in this we find him engaging in a probe behind the victorian facade into the details and implications of uh, some of the standardized hypocrisies of the age the other significant uh, playwrights of the victorian period include arthur wing pinero who had uh, written the squire and the second mrs tanqueray dante dick who had published the magistrate he also like while engaged with a lot of themes of social scandal douglas gerald was primarily a journalist he was associated with the two periodicals athenum and the punch and his works the mutiny at the nord martha willis and the factory girl were mostly melodramatic in nature they were not really successful in stage they did not find much success in print either but he was more uh, known and his influence was more significant uh, in him being the founder of the dramatic author society in 1833 and this society was to protect the interests of the playwrights and in that sense it also becomes one of the moments when politics and art a uh, cross over in order to embrace each other henry arthur jones was a more committed dramatist than many of these minor uh, other dramatists his important works were the liars miss and mrs dane's defense we do not find him enjoying much a popularity but however an analysis of his craft would uh, prove to us that he did have uh, the perfect dramatic genius the other important victorian playwrights whose works are not uh, really discussed in literary histories are w e henley Tom Taylor and Thomas William Robertson. So with this we come to an end of this very brief session on the Victorian uh, dramatists and as we noted at the beginning it's important to build in a lot of continuity into our discussion of literary histories which is why we focus even on lesser known authors and lesser known genres and also the non representative uh, events of every age. 
So with this we wrap up today's session. Thank you for listening and I look forward to seeing you in the next session.